Happy Scrubmas day 19. Unfortunately guys, the stocking has nothing in store for us today, but I do have something to show you. This, this failed, gorgeous smelling scalp scrub. It smells so good. So a while ago, I did do a lot of experimenting with scalp scrubs on my Patreon. And honestly, looking back now, I kind of see a lot of those as successes. So if you do want to see some like successful scalp scrub formulas, go to my Patreon. It is me experimenting, but they did work as opposed to the scalp scrub. It did not turn out okay. This is the second scalp scrub I've tried to make for scrub mess. And both of them ended up in this gummy, sticky mess. And in today's video, I want to talk about how this happens and essentially how this happens in scrubs, well, foaming scrubs specifically, because foaming scrubs have water-based ingredients in it, like SCI and cocomidopropyl betaine and stuff, or any other foaming surfactant really, and water or glycerin. And if you have too much water in your product, it will make it sticky after you add in the sugar because the sugar dissolves and then it ends up super sticky like this. So basically with this video, and since it's scrub mess and since this failed twice, I was just like, let's just post the fail. I'm gonna show you guys how I made this. I'm gonna go through the whole formulating process. And um, yeah, with this video, I essentially want to show you guys that when you're making foaming scrubs or any scrub that contains water, when you add in the sugar, it could <laughs> cause the, the sugar to all evaporate or mostly evaporate or some evaporate, and then it, you'll end up with a super sticky failed scrub. And I don't really feel like a lot of people talk about this topic. I mean, people kind of talk about it, but no one talks about like, how does it not happen? Because sometimes I will make foaming scrubs like the Funfetti and the Strawberry Whipped one, and these don't end up like that. But the thing is, is they do kinda, because both of these had better textures before I added the sugar. And when I add the sugar, I can tell it makes them a little bit more gummy or slimy, but not too much, because it doesn't have too much water to dissolve all the sugar, just some of the sugar gets dissolved. And you'll even see that on websites that sell like Foaming Bath Whip, They'll say like, if you add sugar to it, use more of a coarse sugar and use a lot of sugar because some might evaporate and you need to like counteract that. But my question is, and the question that I can't really seem to find the answer to, and I don't think I ever will. Um, and I think honestly, I don't know if there really is an answer. I think it just comes down to the overall formula. Exactly how much water is okay to have in a scrub without it getting gummy and gross? And why does that happen sometimes and then other times it doesn't? Like, I don't know, I basically need to know like what exact base do I need to have for it to work? Because sometimes it works, like sometimes I can have a good amount of water in my scrub and it works fine and then other times I don't. I'm just gonna show you guys my scalp scrub I failed at and I kind of want to open up the discussion of when you add sugar to scrubs that contain water, they can get gummy and gross. And I honestly don't have a reason why. Like, I mean, obviously I have a reason why it's because of the water, but I can't exactly tell you like how much water is okay. Like how much you can add in without it happening. I, it just comes down to experimenting and trying and seeing what works and seeing what doesn't work. And I've even found in my experience, even upscaling the formula, like the scrub formula, it can fail sometimes when you upscale it and it'll work fine when you make a small batch. So. Formulating is a wild thing. If you have scrubs that fail and you have water in them and they end up gummy and gross, this is why. It's because there's too much water and you need to rework the formula to get less water in there to hopefully get it to work. So hopefully this video is enlightening a bit. I don't know. Let's just get into the failed scalp scrub formula. Alrighty, so you want to make sure you have a heat safe container. And the first ingredient I'm going to start out with is distilled water. And then I'm going to add in this ingredient called quantronized gum or gar cat i don't know it goes by so many different things or like the real inky name i can't even pronounce so i'm not even going to say it. i'll just link it down below so you guys can go find it but this is a cationic gum so it'll help like condition this the hair at least that was the goal with this and it also helps thicken the water so it'll help like stabilize the emulsion and then to this I added in glycerin and honey quat which is another like conditioning ingredient and you end up with a thick thick gel like this is way thicker than I planned on it 
But honestly, at, th at this moment, I was like, okay, this is good. Because I was thinking with a, a thickened gel base, that would also prevent the water from, or not the water, the sugar from dissolving. I thought like a thickened gel watered base would help prevent that, but I guess not. Then to phase B, I added in cocomutopropyl betaine and then sodium cocal isothionate, which is a powdered anionic surfactant. Essentially, I was hoping these two ingredients would be like the lathering and the rinse off. It's what will like cleanse the skin and help spread everything in the scalp. I meant cleanse the scalp, not skin, but I guess scalp is skin. But anyways, yeah, I was hoping this would be like the spreading agent because when things lather, they help spread better and it helps work into the scalp better. And then for phase C, I am going to combine Redomol's SCG, Settle Alcohol, and then coconut oil and menthol crystals. So menthol, like if you Google it, it'll say like peppermint or menthol stimulates scalp to help hair growth. Honestly, I'm not convinced of that. I actually, in my opinion, one thing has only helped grow my hair, but that's not what we're going to talk about right now. And it definitely wasn't menthol, but you know, Google says that and a lot of people think that. So that's why I add the menthol to the scalp scrub. <laughs> anyway, now you can go ahead and heat up all your phases A, B, and C and come back periodically to mix phase B to get that SCI powder to dissolve fully because at this time it might ch be like chunky. This time I actually poured phase B into phase A instead just because phase A was so thick and I mixed that all together and it actually mixed together pretty well. I was worried the phase A would be too chunky. And then I poured that phase A and B into phase C. And I was a little worried here because I thought everything was like chunking up, but I just kept mixing it and everything incorporated pretty well together. And honestly, at this time, I was pretty confident that the scalp scrub would turn out pretty well. So remove it from heat. And as soon as I removed it from heat, I whipped it up a bit with the hand mixer just to make sure everything was well combined because I didn't want anything to separate. I didn't really know what was going to happen in this formula. This was just a shot in the dark. That's why it ended up being a fail. But this is what everything should look like at this time. And just let it cool to around 100 degrees Fahrenheit before you add in the preservative. So once it's cooled to like 100 degrees Fahrenheit, you can add in the Liquid Dermal Plus, which is the preservative. And I let mine sit till the next day because I was thinking if I let it sit for another day, it would help the sugar not dissolve as much. I don't know why that was just a mentality. So I let it sit till the next day. So here we are the next day and this consistency is honestly so gorgeous. I was pretty confident at this time that this scalp scrub was going to work out because I really liked what I had going on at this time. So I don't know why I wanted to wait until the next day to add the sugar. I was hoping maybe this would prevent it from dissolving in the water more. I don't really know why. I don't know. I was just thinking like, oh, maybe if I let the ingredients all settle together for a day, the sugar will be less likely to latch onto that water. I don't know. All my theories were wrong with this. <laughs> like I really thought gelling that water into like a gel would really help prevent it from dissolving the sugar, but nope. I ended up with a really gummy, gross mess that I was extremely disappointed in, but I don't know. Maybe this will be a learning lesson for someone else because honestly, it probably won't be a learning lesson because I will still probably continue to make scrubs that fail like this. And you will probably too, because experiments that fail is so normal in formulating. It's the only way you can learn. You have to try and then fail to learn. So there's nothing wrong with this. So hopefully this will, I don't know, encourage you to not be upset when you fail because it happens all the time. It's just normal and you learn from it. But that is it for today's video. I hope, I don't know, I hope you guys got something out of it and I'll see you tomorrow. Also, don't forget to go over and check out my Patreon where I post two exclusive videos every single month. So there is a ton of videos you can go over there and binge watch for only $5 a month. You get access to the entire backlog and for $10 a month, you can get a shout out for your small business. So let's shout everybody out, Nature's a Farm Girl, let's blend LLC.com, Stardust Bath and Body over on Instagram, HimpyGirl.com, ShopLevi's.com, Owl and Lily over on Etsy, EmbraceBeautyEssentials.com, Legendary Bath and Body, Astari Apothecary, Revega Cosmetics here on YouTube, 
exorebb.com, Pardo Naturals, Natural State Skin, thenatureinus.ca, nearcatelier.com. You can use the code on the screen for 20% off, earthandambernaturals.com, Shark City Naturals, and daytorelaxproducts.com. And the rest of these companies are launching soon, skinbydavu.com, 7th House and Oak over on Etsy, at Black Petal Beauty on Instagram, mycrownandglowery.com. Thank you guys so much for your support. Literally, without you guys on the Patreon, I wouldn't be able to continue doing what I do. So thank you so much. Mm -hmm.